this. So this is a really interesting article courtesy of Mixmag that says the follows. 75% of artists are making a loss on their music according to a new study, which is not surprising to be honest it says 75% of artists are making a loss of their music according to pirate studios the research surveyed more than 1,000 musicians from the UK the US pirate recording studios which concluded that three quarters of the respondents were out of pocket due to spending money on promoting their releases or booking a flipping session at pirate because that place is super expensive now due to making a loss on releases the study reports um that over the, the study Reports that over half have taken a social media detox to cope with the loss. 91% of the surveyed promote their music independently and 75% sorry, um, spend more money than they make to push it on platforms. 56% of artists said that they would create visuals to support their next release while 75% plan to make music videos. Dan Davis, head of community at Pirate, says, as an artist doing your own promo, it's both harder and easier in the social media age. Platforms reward a constant stream of content, which takes a lot of work. The payoff is that you can build your own audience rather than just trying to break through the gatekeepers. Seeing artists take time off social media is really a positive sign that male creators are prioritizing their mental health for a lot of musicians in our studios music is a top uh is on top of a full-time or part-time jobs it's important to take breaks from work music and everything else that comes with being a musician in my opinion this isn't surprising but what should be what should what people should go into um this thinking is that music especially with it being such a competitive field and with it being such an unpredictable industry and with it also being something that isn't you know there's no book you can read to kind of make it it should always be treated as a really fun hobby to do and you should always go into it knowing that you're never you're probably unlikely to make it but if you do it'll be a great surprise but you should kind of treat it but you should kind of approach like a professional it's a really strange mix you shouldn't go into it expecting anything but you should treat it like you're a professional and if something does happen, it's a nice surprise. But I feel like if you're going into it wanting to become a professional musician in your own right, it's maybe not the best idea to just work on your own stuff. You should maybe try and work behind the scenes, maybe mastering, um, maybe mixing, maybe all do, maybe whatever else you can do in the studio in terms of recording, maybe as a writer, producer. There are other things that you can do that would maybe um, allow you to have some... Um, interest in that regard but when it comes to just making it as a sole artist I think people should just treat it more as a real real fun hobby I know that's what I do and that kind of helps to sort of like make sure that I'm not going crazy if I'm not maybe hitting the heady heights of the people that I kind of look up to or that I'm following or that I'm going to go and see and watch because part of the fun for me legitimately as somebody that kind of does it as a really enthusiastic hobby is kind of the creation side of things being you know using a part of my brain that i maybe don't use on a daily day on a daily basis that I can maybe use if i'm kind of you know doing the work and doing the art and i kind of really enjoy that more often than not and i feel like people should go into it with that kind of level of expectation more often but they don't they have these weird expectation levels onto it and they legitimately think that if they just put more effort into things and spend more money into promoting stuff, it's going to get where it's going to get to. And it's not. It's actually a waste of time or a waste of money, actually, doing those type of things. Like, you know, pushing your stuff super hard on social or putting money behind ads and that. It just isn't worth it. You're better off making the art, creating it as best as you can and just pushing yourself on your platforms, like unashamedly. And I know I haven't done that. Even my podcast, I don't do that. I just kind of stream it and put it out. Maybe I do your tweet here and there and I upload the stuff onto YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But I don't do enough for the promo because i've come up from a generation where that was kind of corny to kind of push and promote yourself too much you just did the work and kind of hoped it kind of took off it if it took off or not it was just a fun thing to do and for me that's kind of how i've always operated but i think the if you know that's maybe an extreme way of going about things but i generally do think more artists especially if you're part of this 70 percent, 75 percent of artists who are making a loss you shouldn't be putting your money into ad spends. You shouldn't be trying to get, you know, Instagram promo ads for your mixes and shit or your clips of your song. No one cares. 
just put you just put your effort and that money into just creating the best art that you can and then just push it on your own social media platforms as opposed to trying to you know um push it on the freaking algorithm by paying for ads and shit and all that malarkey that's just that's not worth it investing in your art should never be a loss but investing into me into kind of marketing tours and all that stuff is definitely 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 a loss and that definitely something that should be avoided at all cost in my opinion personally speaking but again you know what do i know what do i know eve says years ago courtney love wrote an expose on the music industry saying labels are even taking percentage of merch and etc nowadays yeah we've seen that already um i think we've seen that with um what's it called i think live nation are doing that i think because of the venues it's very very crafty they kind of worked in a deal because they've got a grip on all the venues they worked in a deal where even if you are independent um, or so even if you are kind of selling your own merch because you're doing a show in their venue you have to give them a cut of your merch sales which is flipping insane really is insane because the whole reason why merch became such a big thing in the first place was because artists weren't making enough money um from their flipping records from the tunes that they were made basically slaving over and flipping crafting and putting together they were making enough money from that hard work they did so then they go and do live shows then the flipping labels adjust again and create contracts that kind of lock them into doing live shows and cutting them into that percentage. Cool. Then they start pushing the merch because they can get a lot, a lot more of that straight in their pocket. Money wise, the labels again, look at that, go back to the drawing board, create the contracts so that they can exploit and take away from that as well. Like it's horrendous, man. It really, it like, I'm a little bit more understanding with artists who legitimately say, Hey, I want a break. I hate the music industry and stuff. It's very predatory. I understand it because from the outside looking in from people, some of your favorites and stuff and what they've been going through is flipping crazy to see in real time, let alone the stuff happening with designer. Look at that, right? Designer getting caught on a flipping plane, jacking off and shit. Now he's going into a mental institution and all of that, I think stems from the fact that he hasn't realized his potential and he kind of probably got, you know, um, he kind of got jerked in the, in some deals as well. No pun intended. That definitely hasn't helped things. But yeah, the music industry is toxic as fuck, man. I don't think anyone's going to deny that one. Then moving on with that, um, this is another kind of thing to touch upon this that kind of, you know, it, you know, kind of ex expounds on that topic I was speaking about. This is courtesy of RA. It says only one in five dance music creators earn a living. IMS reports fines. And this, I think, also could explain why one of the things i remember speaking about before in the podcast is that i don't really understand why there doesn't seem to be a culture within dance music of big prominent djs bringing up and coming djs under their wing and i'm speaking from a selfish point of view being an up and coming dj and stuff and seeing people and seeing a lot of people coming up are having to kind of just do it on their own or maybe form their own collective but you rarely see some of the big dogs out there really putting their arm around some people and saying hey these are the next ones up i'm going to be taking them on tour with me they're going to be playing for me they're going to be opening up for me whatever it may be and i'm going to put them on it doesn't happen there's a lot of like i feel like it's not what's called selfishness but everyone's kind of on their own little island and maybe there's a cool clubs and stuff but it feels like there's not a lot of sharing going along going around or collaboration when it comes to maybe not collaboration is not the right word but or just bringing people in for lack of a better term and i feel like this is maybe the reason why because if only one in five people are making it it means the opportunities out there are kind of scarce so there is a a somewhat understandable scarcity um mentality going on within dance music especially within djs because they don't want to bring somebody in and put their arm around them because there's a possibility that person could end up being better than them and taking all their fans away and if it took so if, if it's this much hard work to get into the industry and become successful then the last thing you're going to want to do is voluntarily give up your spot so maybe that's why i explain some of the flipping you know selfishness that goes on in dance music a little bit but the article says as follows the latest ims business report has found that just one in five dance music creators earn a living from the craft published yesterday april 26 the data from the annual report suggests that 45 percent of respondents make no income 
45 percent i'm probably i'm definitely in this 45 percent although i definitely received my odd little 150 here and there from pub gigs and stuff but after my previous cancellation that's probably over so for the time of me spending money hiring pirate studio um my transport to get there my little cheeky mackie d's on the way there on the oh, on the way back or maybe an uber on the way back if i'm feeling tired or maybe some flipping drinks that is a lot of money that's being spent to play and stream online and shit and create a mix without anybody putting anything in your pocket. But I find it fun to be able to play in a place like Pirate with kind of club ready equipment, fuck around, you know, um, try out some ideas, put together a mix and release it and have people listen to it and maybe they enjoy it, maybe they don't. But I always find that fun because I just love dance music and I love to DJ anyway, regardless whether it's free or I pay my own money. But this definitely explains why the industry or the scene is a little bit tense in some places, a little bit tetchy. Um, because most people aren't eating from this stuff. Most people. They like to pretend they are, but they definitely aren't. 40% of respondents have made no income, the article says, but 41% expect to make a living in the future, which is just hope, isn't it? Hope and pray. Pure vibes. Um, the study also suggested, so assessed the biggest challenge dance music creators face when trying to carve out a career. The quote, cutting through the noise scored highest. Hmm. Followed closely by the lack of time and the lack of financial resources. Additionally, 67% of women say the pressure to look good impacts their career compared to 14% of women. Just going on that last point, this is kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because if you're a, if you're a good looking girl and you also like to DJ, you know there's more possibility of you being able to make it. It's just what it is, isn't it? You look at all the girls online on Instagram and shit who are always being pushed, who are always kind of really on it in terms of clipping themselves up and putting up little clips of themselves playing in clubs and whatnot and on going on tour, mirror selfies. All those girls, without exception, are all kind of conventionally attractive. They've definitely got guys who would be interested in them or whoever's interested in them, right? For sure. So there's no denying that that kind of attention, especially if it garners you a crazy amount of followers, a crazy amount of engagement overall, that would definitely interest some clubs who are struggling to sell tickets or just want to put people on who are going to attract a crowd because they look at your flipping follower crowd and think, hey, we're going to get you in. But I can also understand if you're a pretty girl and you can DJ, how it can make you feel a little bit horrible and a little bit icky that you're only getting booked because you have big tits or because you have a really pretty face or because you have that kind of comatose like dead lip thing that girls do nowadays online or you have a really shiny you know nose so you look like an anime character all those things can kind of play into your favor and help you get your foot in the door but they can also be um, very uh, problematic for your overall safety going in because people look at you like a piece of meat. They want to touch you. They want to feel you. They want to come close to you. They want to say crazy shit to you. And it can get a little bit ugh, disconcerting that you're not just judged on the music alone and there's always other stuff going on. But it's a, But again, it's a really good opportunity too if you do want to get in because you know it looks like if you just want to get in to be as just a pure DJ and get up behind the booth wearing a burka or something, you're not going to get far, probably. You would assume so. You would assume so. Um, and then the other parts here about cutting through the noise, this is true. There's just too much content out there, let alone mixes and stuff. Like I said before, that I d I've never listened to NTS. Like, I've never listened to a full show in my entire life. And I'm from London. And a lot, a lot I know a lot of the people that started the station. I know a lot of people that play on the station. And it's obviously something that's in and around where I'm from and kind of you know i can't escape it but i've legitimately never in my life listened to nts like ever and that's not because i'm better than them or anything it's just there's just not enough time in a day to listen to stuff like on top of all the stuff that i watch on top of all the books that i read on top of all the things that i do on my free time on top of work there's just not enough time to listen to that so i just think nowadays especially if you're a becoming DJ and artist, it must be difficult. It must feel quite hard to cut through the noise because people have got many things that's kind of occupying their minds and to get in front of them and have them pay attention to what you do, double tap a video of you DJing somewhere, go and actually click on that sound card link to listen to it. All that thing is really difficult. So I understand that kind of the noise, but that just goes back to what I said before. I think you should go into it always just enjoying it for enjoying sake 
and not thinking oh i need to i need to make it this needs to be a thing i had to get a certain amount of plays no just enjoy what you do and hopefully something comes of it and if it doesn't it's at least you're having a fun um time in the process it continues here it says, from a financial perspective, the reports suggest the global dance music industry is in rude health. After a growth of 34% last year, the industry is now valued at $11.3 billion, a figure 60% higher than pre-pandemic times. Despite this growth, the proportion of women DJs getting hired for festival and other events fell down from 12% to 50%. That's crazy that it's become bigger, actually, over time. It doesn't feel like that going out. Maybe it feels like there's more events going out there, but I don't feel like mo most of these events are selling out as much as they should. Clubs aren't as busy, I feel like, on a week-to-week -week basis. It honestly doesn't feel like that when I'm out there on the streets myself. But maybe I'm just not seeing what I should be seeing. And this conversation about male, sorry, about more female digital lines, this needs to end, honestly. It's just difficult for everybody. This idea that you have to kind of... I don't know what they're going to do, like try and crowbar in women on lineups by making them what half and half It's just idiotic. Just start off made. I think the, the most important thing is to start off by actually showcasing and platforming call interesting DJs, regardless of how they um, identify or whatever gender they are or whatnot. Do that first. That should be always the beginning point because too many of these places and these institutions, these festivals, these clubs just go for the tried and true. They're not adventurous. They don't try new things. They don't, you know, try and introduce different sounds, you know, try and maybe introduce different promoters to the scene. Nothing. It's always the same old names because they get lazy and because they know those people are guaranteed to sell them a certain amount of tickets so they can break even on the bar. That's what they do. But if you want to start somewhere, do that first. And then by proxy of highlighting underrepresented voices or giving them a platform, honestly, what it does is that by by default you will inevitably come across that you will start hiring more women DJs. It will just happen by default because you're exploring more people that haven't been maybe showcased or platformed or highlighted. That's what would happen. But this whole let's focus on just getting more women on the lineups is just dumb in my opinion. But what do I know? Um, this the publisher said the publisher report coincided with the launch of this um, uh, year's summit. Returning to the Destino Ibiza IMS 2023 was a featured discussion with Shirel, Elijah, and Fat Tony, among others. So I'm definitely going to check it because I'm always a fan of checking this sort of stuff and kind of getting a bit balls deep into the dance music business nonsense. I'm probably one of the only people that actually watches a lot of these panel discussions in full. But I'm definitely going to be checking out the IMS YouTube channel, um, Ibiza Music um seminar whatnot and i'll check it out for sure for sure for sure for sure